So now let's learn about a problem called the longest increasing subsequence problem, right? It's a fairly popular problem in algorithms, very, very popular. You find this in most textbooks of algorithms. We'll write it in short as LIS, longest increasing subsequence. Let's first understand what is longest sub longest increasing subsequence with a couple of examples, then we'll go ahead and solve it, right? So imagine if I have an array like this, right? So what we want to find is the length of a subsequence. When I say subsequence, it means non-contiguous. Look at this. When I say subsequence, it obviously means non-contiguous. So which means from this array, I want to find a bunch of elements which are strictly increasing and the length of that subsequence or non-contiguous subsequence to be very clear is longest. For example, here, if I take element 2, 4, 6, I can't take 3 now because 3 is less than 6. I can only take elements greater than 6 now. 7, 9. If I take these 5 elements from this array and construct a new array like this, look at this. In this array, all the elements are strictly increasing. They're, they're strictly in increasing order, right? They're strictly in increasing order. And this is a subsequence because the order has not been messed up with. So we are using 2 here, 4 here. 2 comes before 4, so we place 2 before 4 here also. So the sequence itself, the subsequence itself, we are keeping the order as is, right? And we want all these numbers to be in increasing order, which means 2 greater than 4 greater than 6 greater than 7 greater than 9. And we want to find the longest such increasing subsequence. In this case, this is the longest sub longest increasing subsequence, and the length of the longest and the length of the subsequence is 5. Right, so this is what we want to arrive at. Okay, very simple. Again, so imagine there's there's a boundary case here. Imagine if we have an array like this, right? Four and three. What is the longest increasing subsequence here? I can just take element four, and that that single element will be the longest subsequence. Because if I take four and three, remember that four is greater than three. So we do not uh, sorry, so this has to be less than I'm sorry. My bad. Sorry. My bad. Sorry, I Instead of writing less than, I wrote uh, greater than, sorry. So 2 less than, 4 less than, 6 less than, 9. I'm sorry, my bad, right? So what you want is, you want these elements to be in strictly increasing order, right? Strictly increasing order. It has to be subsequence and we want to find the longest such subsequence. In this case, if I take 4, I can't take 3 because 3 is less than 4. It is, it's no more increasing subsequence. So I can take just this single element 4 or I could also take the single element 3. In both these instances, the length of the longest increasing subsequence is just one, right? So this is a nice boundary case to think of, right? Okay, now given this problem, how do you solve it? Okay, first and foremost, let's look at the brute force. Okay, brute force, again, let's assume I have total of n elements here. Let's assume that I have an, I have an array of n elements. When I'm creating an increasing subsequence, I have n elements, right? I can pick, I can choose for every element. I can say that I'll either choose this element or not choose this element. I can either choose this. Look at this. When I'm constructing a subsequence, again, this is a very brute force approach. First, so in the, in the brute force approach, what I'll do is I'll first construct subsequences. First, I'll construct subsequences. Then I'll check if they're increasing or not. And then amongst all the increasing subsequences, I'll find the longest one. First to construct a subsequence, I can say, okay, I'll take the first element. Okay, I'll take the second element. I will not take the third element. So I'm not taking it, right? So each element, when I'm constructing a subsequence here, look at this. When I'm constructing a subsequence here, I can choose to take an element or not take an element. For example, if I choose to not to take an element, I choose to take this element. So let me, so if for every element, I have a binary choice. I take this element, I take this element, I don't take this element. Let's assume I take this element. Right, I don't take this element, I don't take this element, I don't take this element. Let's say, now I got a subsequence now. What am I doing? First, I'm constructing subsequences. Is this an increasing subsequence? This is not an increasing subsequence. This is not an increasing subsequence, so I'll drop it. Right, so what I'll do now is I'll first generate all the subsequences. What is the time complexity of generating all the subsequences? Just think about it. I have n elements. For every element, I can either keep it or not keep it. So which means I have a binary choice here. So I'll have two power n subsequences that I have to generate, right? For each subsequence, I'll have to check if it is increasing subsequence or not. I'll keep only the increasing subsequences. Amongst all the increasing subse subsequences, I'll pick the longest one. 
This is a brute force approach. But what is the time complexity of this brute force approach? Order of 2 power n. Because if I start generating all the subsequences, it will be order of 2 power n. Uh, order of 2 power n subsequences that are present, which means the time complexity to generate all of them will be at least order of 2 power n. This is exponential time complexity. We don't want this. The moment you encounter something like this, this should strike to you that probably you can optimize this solution. Now, I want you to pause this video here and think about a way to solve this problem. Okay, before you check out the rest of the solution. Okay, I want you to pause it. If you don't want a hint, please pause this video right here and try to solve this problem. Right? Now, if you want a hint, here is the biggest hint. This problem is a classic case of dynamic programming. In dynamic programming, what did we see? We saw that there is overlapping subproblem, right? There is overlapping subproblem, right? We, we, we want to have overlapping subproblem along with recursion, along with recursion, right? So if you have both of them, you can pose it as a dynamic programming problem. Now, I want you to tackle this problem because you have seen what dynamic programming is. We've already seen some problems of dynamic programming. I want you to tackle the problem of longest increasing subsequence. Try to pose it as a dynamic programming problem before you check out the rest of the solution. This is how your problem solving skills improve, right? So I want you to please pause and try it before you check out the rest of the solution. Okay, so let me explain the solution. I'm assuming that you have put in some effort here. Okay, so this is my array. So let me define a function like this, LIS of i. So LIS of i basically means, means that I'm, this, this is the length of the longest increasing subsequence from a1 to a i. Suppose if this is my a i, if this is my index i, LIS i basically means I'm going to compute the longest increasing subsequence from the first element to the ith element. Or if you want, if you are using C, C++ or Java syntax, it is from 0th element to i to ith element. Okay, just to be clear here. Okay, so let's use C syntax or C indexing. So indices don't start from 1, indices start from 0. Okay, so from 0th element to the ith element, your longest increasing subsequence is represented like this. Now, what do we want? Look at this. What do we want? So recursion is also called as op, uh, rec recursion will also, we, we can also say recursion is basically optimal substructure, right? So we want to, we want to now break this problem into a recursion problem with overlapping sub problem. See, these are the two properties, right? Optimal substructure, which basically means recursion and overlapping sub problem so that you can store the previous results and solve this. Again, if you can come up with this formulation of LIS, you have solved the problem. Translating this into code is trivial. Okay, here, here is the crux of it. What it says here is, if I want to find, suppose this is my array, right? If this is my array, if I want to find the longest increasing subsequence till here, till the ith element, can I write it as longest subsequence of, uh, or LIS? I'll just use the word LIS so that it's simpler. So in computing LIS of i, can I use LIS of something smaller than i so that I can represent this as an optimal substructure case. Basically, can I write recursion here? Suppose, imagine, imagine, imagine if I have solution for LIS of 0, LIS of 1, so on and so forth, if I have everything from LIS of i minus 1. Suppose if I want to compute LIS of i, how can I write LIS of i in terms of LIS of 0 to LIS of i minus 1? That's what your recursion is all about, right? Right, that's what it is. So the idea here is very interesting. It says LIS of i, which means the, the longest increasing subsequence with the ith element will be equal to, see either this, there are two possibilities here. This element can be present here. That's one possibility. See, this element can be present as part of the longest increasing subsequence or it may not be present. There are three cases actually, right? So this can be present in the longest subsequence. Okay, that longest subsequence could be constructed using other elements that we have already seen, which are prior to i. Or this element may not be present. Or the longest increasing subsequence could start with this element. That's a third possibility. There are three possibilities, right? Think about them, right? So when will this element, look at this, when will 5 be part of the longest increasing subsequence till i? Look at this. So this is, this is a very interesting formulation. So LIS of i will be 1 plus. Why is this 1 plus there here? Because here, under what circumstances will 5 be part, will 5 be added to the existing longest subsequence? See, if you look at this, if you look at this, what is the longest subsequence till, till, if this is my i, 
the longest subsequence, the LIS till I minus 1 is 246. Right? The, see, this is my I. My LIS till I minus 1 is 246. When will 5 be added to this sequence? When can I add 5? If this element, look at this, if this element is greater than all these elements, look at this, if this element is greater than all these elements, only then I can add 5 to this. So what it says, this, this is a very interesting formulation. Okay. So let's take the case under which this will be added. Okay. So it is 1 plus. Okay. Let's, I'll come to this max in a while. Just bear with me. LIS of J, where J is less than I. Look at this. When can I add 5 to this? Look at this. When can I add this 5 to this sequence? If, look at this. If for all J that are less than I and greater than 0, look at this. For all J, for all J. So all these items, all these indices will be J. So J will be for all of these. If AJ is less than AI, then I can add it. For example, look at this. So what, what am I going to do here? I'm going to take LIS of 0, the longest increasing subsequence, which has only the 0th element. And now I'll say, if the 0th element, look at this, if the 0th element is less than my ith element, right? If it is less than that, then I can combine the 0th element with this element and create a longest increasing subsequence. I can do that, right? Similarly, imagine if I have LIS1, if A1, if A1, so what are all the subsequences I can create? I can create 2, 5. That's one subsequence that's possible if I'm using LIS of 0. If I'm using LIS of 1, I can create 2, 4, 5 sequence. And why am I able to create 2, 4, 5 sequence? Because 5 is greater than 4. Look at this. Okay. If I use LIS of 2 here, this is 0, 1, 2, 3. Then I have a sequence 2, 4, 6. But I can't add 5 here. I can't add 5 here. Okay. That, that's a problem that I'm running into. I can't add 5 here. Right. So next, what can I do? Next, 2, 4, 6, 3. What is the longest subsequence in 2, 4, sub, 2, 4, 6, 3? It is 2, 4, 6 itself. Even this, I can't add 5. Right. So what does it say? It says, take all the longest subsequences that you can construct. Look at this. Till, see, your J will be all these possible values. Your J is, J can be 0, 1, 2, up to I minus 1. So what does it say? 1 plus maximum of, because we want to create the longest increasing subsequence. So 1 plus max of the LIS of J, where J can be any index from 0 to up to I minus 1 and AJ should be less than AI. If this is the case, look at this, if this is the case. So what am I doing here? To compute LIS of I, I'm using LIS of all these, all these values. To create LIS of I, to compute LIS of I, I'm, I'm using LIS of 0, 1, 2, up to I minus 1. And I'm checking if A0, A1, AI minus 1, if it is less than AI, then I'll add it and I'll take the maximum amongst all of them. Right? Th again, this is the most important formula. If you get this formula, that's it. Just like our, just like our other problems in, uh, uh, in dynamic programming. Once you get this, the problem is solved. It's as simple as that. Right? Here, what am I doing here? I'm using optimal substructure. Why am I using optimal substructure here? Because I'm breaking a problem for, I'm, I'm breaking down a solution for LIS of I into problems which are of smaller size from LIS of 0 to LIS of I minus 1, right? Now here there is another case also. When I'm computing LIS of I, I'm using all these solutions. Now when I'm computing LIS of I plus 1 also, I'll be using all these solutions, which means there's also overlapping subproblem because the solutions that I've computed for subproblems, I'm using them over and over again. So it makes sense for me to store them. That's the core idea of dynamic programming, right? The memoization concept of dynamic programming. Okay, this is one case. There is an other case, which is what if my longest subsequence starts from here? That's another possibility. So if this condition is not satisfied, the longest increasing subsequence will be one. And this one case comes because of the boundary case that we have seen. Look at this. This is the boundary case that we have seen, right? The, your, you see, the, the smallest possible value of LIS itself is one. So this is like your boundary case of recursion. Now, once you have this formula, translating this into code is straightforward. Okay, now let's look at it. Suppose if I'm given an array A of n elements from 0 to n minus 1, how do I write the code? Very simple code, literally 10 lines of code. So I'm creating this array called LIS for memoization. This array is being created for memoization to store the value of this LIS, to store the LIS of 0, LIS of 1 till LIS of i minus 1 at any point. 
right? So our objective here is to store these values. Initially, everything is zero. LIS of zero is one. This is the boundary case. Okay, cool. Now look at this. Look at how I'm writing this. Again, I'm not implementing this recursively. I'm implementing this iteratively. Like this is like a bottom up DP. What I'm doing here is a bottom up DP. Okay, so that I can write it in just iteration without worrying about the stack space of recursion. Okay, now let's look at this for i equals to one to i minus one. Okay, so again, look at this. So I already have LIS of zero. I want to compute from LIS of one to LIS of n minus one because I have a total of n elements here. Cool. Now, what do I do to compute LI? Look at the, uh, to compute LIS of i. What do I need to compute LIS of i? I need to find the maximum of LIS of j where j lies between zero to i. So what am I doing here? I'm writing a for loop here where j goes from zero to i minus one. This is this is exactly translating this mathematical expression into a for loop. Now in this for loop, I'll take I'll compute max of LIS of j, whatever that value is. So I'll compute LIS of j, and I have two conditions here. Look at this. This is one condition. This is one condition, and wherever this condition is satisfied, wherever a i is greater, strictly greater than a j, I'll take the LIS and I'll take the max of all of them. So what am I doing here? If a i is less than uh, sorry, if a j is less than a i, or in other words, because I'm trying to compute LIS of i here, in this outer loop, I'm trying to compute LIS of i. My j goes from zero to i minus one. If a i is greater than a j, then a i can be part of a i. Uh, the a i I can I can add a i to the longest increasing subsequence that I get with l i s j. And if l i s i is less than l i s j till now, so this is primarily to compute the max. If these two conditions are satisfied, I'll say l i s i equals to l i s j. Now, what does l i s i cut has at the end of this loop? At the end of this for loop, look at this. At the at the end of this whole for loop. Okay, actually, I actually I don't. Okay, we can we can do it this way also. So once once this if condition is satisfied, I'll just say LIS of i equals to one plus LIS of i. So this LIS of i already has LIS of j, right? So LIS of i is one plus LIS of j. That's what I'm literally doing here. Okay, so what what did we do? We did one plus the we found the maximum over all j's such that a j is less than a i. This whole expression that we have written here, we have simply translated this into a for loop. Okay, so this 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 uh, green colored for loop ends here. This yellow for loop ends here. This function ends here. That's it. Okay, again, before we do this, we can just say simply return LIS of n minus one. That's it. We are done. It's just again, this is a bottom up. So this is a bottom up DP. Okay, where we are not using recursion, where we are using an iterative solution to avoid the stack space. Now, what is the total time complexity of this? Think about it. You have a for loop like this. Within that, there is one more for loop like this. That's all you have. Okay, that's all your code is. So whenever you have this for loop structure, it is clearly order of n square. So the total time complexity of this is order of n square time. And what is the space complexity? Let's not forget that we are storing the LIS values here. So it's order of n space. Okay, so this is the dynamic programming based solution. But there is one more solution that is better than this. Which is an order of n log n solution. There is an order of n log n time solution for this problem also. Okay, so we'll discuss that in the next video. Okay, but LIS is a longest increasing subsequence is a standard DP problem, and if you apply the DP based approach, of course, brute force you get exponential time complexity. This is a very simple. This is a simple form of uh, uh, dynamic programming. Okay, it's a simple form of dynamic programming. And when we solve it again, the crux is in being able to determine this recursive function. Once you get this recursive function translating into code, it's literally ten lines of ten maximum twelve lines of code. Simple bottom-up DP. We have seen tons of examples on how bottom-up DP itself works. Space and time complexity is this. But there is there is an other better approach for longest increasing subsequence that you can solve in order of n log n time that we'll discuss in another video.